Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF, the GFS ensembles. We'll also have a look at the UK Met Office weather warnings as we do have yellow wind warning in force and we'll finish up with the UK Met Office um, five day uh, forecast with the precipitation temperature and we'll have a look at wind gusts as well for that yellow warning. It's looking very interesting now over the next few weeks we've got a good strong signal for high pressure to take over and we've been seeing that for a number of days and we are now still seeing some of these runs showing much much colder conditions and snowier conditions potentially in time for the last third of december including christmas into the new year so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow on twitter as well the links in the description if we, if we do have a look at the latest GFS, you can see at the moment we do have a milder sector pushing in. We've had heavier rain today. And you can see, generally, it's called a westerly pattern. It's this small low pressure system that vigorously sort of deepens as it heads towards the northwest of Scotland. Now, it's going to remain offshore, but some of its heavy rain and very strong winds could impact some of the islands off the coast of western Scotland. So there is a yellow warning. We'll have a look at the end of the video. But after that, we just maintain a very westerly pattern. However, towards middle of next week, high pressure really gets going over the top of the UK. Now, if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, you can see actually it's quite mild. It's really mild, actually, for the time of year. However, um, we will likely see an inversion. I've, spread about, I've spoke about this over the last few days where temperature stores of surface are actually colder than the upper air temperatures with highs of around mid single digits, five, six, seven degrees, lows around freezing. Now, if we do go back to the pressure chart, so we do continue to move that through, you can see the high pressure just sort of moves around. Towards the 20th of December, we see it trying to originate further northwards. Now, on this latest GFS, nothing too much comes of it. However, as we see with the GM and the East OEF, towards day 10, we have a real potential for easterly winds to move in. So on this one, run, you can see we do get a slack easterly wind, but that bitterly cold air in time for Christmas is heading into Eastern Europe and into the far southeast of Europe. And we see have another go at a ridge towards uh, Scandinavia and towards Greenland. And you can see that bitterly cold air going down into Eastern Europe. And you can see brutally cold towards Italy, Greece and generally southeastern Europe. Whereas the UK remains in a sort of inversion pattern with milder upper air conditions, but still high pressure and dry. Now, if we do have a look at the GM, see if that does compare. I must say, it does go really quite cold towards the end of this run. You can see generally, again, westerly winds at the moment. High pressure moves in for the middle of the next week. High pressure mills around for a good few days with an inversion. And then it pushes northwards, taking over Scandinavia. And we see a proper Scandinavian high building. Now, if we look at the upper air temperatures, bitterly cold air is sitting just to our east. Now, that is very, very cold air for the end of December. That would be sending us into the freezer. Beast from the east, like, probably not to the extent we saw in 2018 by any means, but it's a similar setup, very cold air across Siberia, Scandinavia, and Eastern Europe, and we would be going into the freezer for the Christmas period. Can you believe it? Now, of course, this is one outlier run, it's not guaranteed to happen, and we don't even start to pull in that bitterly cold air on this run. It's just poised, if we gave it another 24 to 48 hours, it would swiftly move in. However, it is still a scenario, and it's a pretty likely scenario. Um, we have decent support for this. Definitely that high pressure in and around Scandinavia looks likely, because that's normally the issue with any easterly winds or Scandinavian high. It's how strong that high pressure is, and can it hold off the Atlantic? And as you can see, even by the GFS, it is much, much stronger than any jet stream um, trying to push it through um, and sort of topple it. So it does look very likely we will be seeing this high pressure in and around the UK. It's just where it goes and where the wind direction does get to because you can see here just with subtle shift further northwards we are pulling in a bitterly cold easterly wind temperature deviation look at that brutally cold just to our east but really mild to our north as that warm air moves further northwards um enhancing that higher pressure now if we have a look at the ECMDF so let's compare you can see again westerly winds over the next few days high pressure really building in by next week and then it moves northwards and for the beginning of Christmas week, with Christmas on a Friday, uh, on a Saturday, sorry, this year, 
by the Tuesday, we're starting to pull in colder air into the northeast. Now, it's not brutally cold, minus five line moving through, um, but... We, if we keep kept that high pressure going there, which is highly likely, having a look at the longer range runs um, and the extended range, of course, very likely we keep the high pressure there. So we would start to put in that much colder air towards Scandinavia if you gave it another few days in time for Christmas. So by no means am I saying it's guaranteed we're going to be seeing anything massively cold around Christmas. But there is a very decent chance now we do see something at least colder, whether it's snowier um, with bitterly cold air moving in. It's still up in the air, but at this stage, it's definitely looking quite dry, potentially quite frosty. And as you can see, some of these runs are really starting to put in some bitterly cold air in from the east or northeast. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, now they haven't fully updated yet, but they've updated to about the 24th of December. So they've got another couple of days to go. Uh, we'll have a look at the 6 out as well. You can see generally mild over the next week or so, week to 10 days really. But as I said, there will be an inversion around, especially um, next week with the high pressure really taking over. For the time being though, it's actually really quite mild out there um, as we do have Atlantic air moving in, um, not seeing that inversion yet. However, towards the 20th, 21st December, so in sort of the 10 day time frame, so still the unreliable time frame, but uh, we're seeing quite a continuous signal for this. You see the upper air temperatures start to drop to around average or below average by the 24th of December, and you can see some runs going brutally cold, and I mean minus 5, minus 10 at 850 HPA, and of course, have a look at that GM run, we wouldn't be pulling in that bitterly cold air until around the 25th, so which is out of the current GFS time frame, uh, GFS ensemble time frame. If we do refresh it briefly, you can, you can see some very, very cold runs appearing towards the end of the run. Minimal precipitation is around as well, so high pressure still in control. And if, again, we have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see, again, very high pressure in the longer term. A couple going much lower, but not showing anything too amazing. So if we do have a look at uh, what's happening in uh, Glasgow, uh, again, Sea level pressure, very high from around the 16th to 17th of December. Of course, it will take another couple of days for that high pressure to build in towards Scotland than it would in England um, and in generally in London as well, as that high pressure is building up from the south. So it may take another couple of days to get there, but it will be getting there. And you can see with the upper air temperatures, a bit up and down over the next couple of days with a more mobile jet stream. And then temperatures are quite high, very dry as well from around the 17th of December onwards. And you can see right towards the end of the run, some much colder runs starting to come in. Again, if we do have a look at the uh, 6Z run, you can see towards the end of the run, very cold as well. And then if we also have a look at London for the 6Z run, once again, you see maybe a third to a half on soul members now showing something around minus five or even lower towards the Christmas period. And as I said again, it's not guaranteed, but the potential is there for seeing something really quite cold. The GM run, of course, will be one of these colder outliers, showing an almost beast in the east type uh, style uh, and sort of, sort of pattern. But it's on the it's on the table. That's all I can say at this stage. This is a potential outcome, and we'll have to see how it does evolve over the next week uh, or next couple weeks. Now, if we do finally have a look at the Met Office warnings, and then we'll have a look at the uh, UK Met Office uh, run. You can see from tonight, uh, for, sorry, from tomorrow night, 9 p.m. until 6 a.m. on Monday, we do have a yellow weather warning in. Very windy weather is possible across northern parts of Scotland because of that small low pressure system moving up from uh, for, moving up from the southwest. Strong winds are possible during Sunday evening. Potential for 80 to 85 miles per hour winds, 90 miles per hour in a few locations. Of course, if this was mainland, definitely be seeing an amber warning for this. But mainly being offshore, it's just a yellow warning. However, very strong gusts uh, will, yeah, as I said, will remain offshore. High impact, decent likelihood. So we could be seeing this even upgrade to an amber warning over the next day or two. By Monday, we still have that warning in force. But we have another warning from midnight on Monday um, until 12 p.m. Very windy weather is possible across northern Scotland, further details, again, 80 to 85 miles per hour, maybe 90 miles per hour in a few spots from a west to southwest direction. Again, high impact, decent likelihood as well. So I have to see really what happens with this, but it is looking, yeah, potentially, potentially quite impactful, uh, but luckily it is remaining fairly offshore. 
Now, if we do have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at what is going on over the next five days. Again, you can see the heavier rain pushing through today, should be clearing overnight tonight, and then generally some heavier rain pushing into the northwest ahead of that really significant weather front um, and essentially sort of uh, low pressure system bringing those very strong winds that will eventually clear through um, and then eventually we do see generally just uh, rain pushing in periods of rain and then eventually by midweek high pressure should start to build up from the south making things much much more pleasant now if we do have a look at the wind gusts again nothing too major over the next sort of day and then you see those really strong winds potentially across parts of western Ireland. 100 110 miles per hour winds maybe even higher than 115 gusts of course and for a period of time moving through very swiftly through the early hours of monday only really last a few hours at that sort of 80 plus mile per hour strength and then very quickly moving through and potentially some more um yeah so very strong winds moving through um, towards Sunday evening into the early hours of Monday. So if you are in the northwest of Scotland or parts of western parts of Northern Ireland and Western Republic of Ireland, make sure you stay tuned to the warnings um, uh, and your local warnings, of course, as well. As there could be some severe impacts. It's not likely to last particularly long, maybe six hours maximum of these very strong winds, but there could be very strong wind gusts. The indication is that it will mainly stay offshore, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some 70 or 80 mile per hour gusts even towards coastal and slightly inland areas. So make sure you stay tuned to the warnings and the forecast as well. Um, I'm sure your local authorities are taking the ne necessary precautions um, for what could be uh, coming from this potential period of very strong winds. Now, if we do have a look at max temperatures, you can see today, nothing too mild. But by this, this evening, it's going to be increasing as milder air does push through. And by tomorrow, highs of around 11, 12, 13 degrees in the south. Really quite mild. Beyond that, for Sunday evening, things starting to cool down with a bit cooler air pushing in from the northwest, but nothing too major. And again, Monday and Sunday, still seeing temperatures around sort of double digits in the far southeast. But for the north, frost potentially across Northern Ireland, Scotland, Northern England as well. So we have much colder air sitting there. And then eventually by tuesday temperatures once again seven eight degrees and wednesday another 11 12 degrees so not looking too uh too cold indeed but once that inversion starts getting going towards the end of next week we would definitely start to see temperatures drop down back into the single digits so it will be pretty chilly even if those upper temperatures do look pretty mild but at this stage, nothing too major happening over the next week. Potentially, again, those very strong winds towards the northwest. But now all eyes are going to be on that last third of December towards the Christmas period. What are we going to see with this high pressure? Is it just going to be around the UK, potentially giving us some chillier weather and some dry weather, frost as well, around as well? Or is it going to really get going to our north and start to pull in something much colder for the last week of December? Of course, that's including Christmas, um, Christmas period into the new year. And of course, long range forecasts for a time have been predicting the potential for blocking, just where it's going to be appearing now and whether we are going to be pulling in those really quite cold north to northeastly or even a flat beast from the east sort of pattern in from Europe. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you again for another video soon.